my topic today is called God's Word, the Real Treasure Man, Salvation. And I want to use this opportunity to highlight God's Word, what God's Word actually does as it relates to this treasure and how God's Word actually is a treasure map to this treasure. The importance also of us realizing that it's a treasure. It's when we minimize what it is that we find ourselves becoming complacent in our walk with God. So I want to use this message to highlight the fact that there is a treasure that's been given to us. There's truly a treasure been given to us. And we need to stand on that, live by that, but also realize that it's only really achievable via God's word. Praise the Lord. Let's look at my key verse today that I have as a guideline. Here we get at the reading of God's holy word. It's Matthew chapter 6, verses 19, 20, and 21. Jesus speaking here says, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. We're moth and rust, do corrupt, and we're thieves break through and steal. We're neither moth nor rust, do corrupt, and we're thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Praise the Lord. I have two points that I want to, as always, to use to bring forward this word. Point number one simply says the word to revealing. The treasure, God's word. Point two says, the word to the treasure, God's word. This message is a very simple message. Paul says it over and over through the scripture that this message of salvation is not a complicated message. It's a very simple message that God has given to us. 1 Corinthians 15 really reveals what the gospel is in terms of the presentation and the understanding of this treasure we have and how the treasure begins to become available to all men. My message today is simply to highlight that God's word is vital in revealing, first of all, that there is a treasure. And then in the word itself, it reveals a treasure map. It shows you how to get to this treasure. But if you don't view salvation as a treasure, there is going to be a lot of other things that get in your way. Pastor Siemens, one of her most favorite, if not the favorite verses, Matthew 6 and 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his stuff, his righteousness, and all the other types of stuff that you're looking for, thinking about, shall be added unto you. But it's when God is in the right place is when we really have a respect and an appreciation for this thing called a treasure. There is no treasure on this earth that can be compared to the treasure that we're looking for. That's called salvation. My topic says God's word, the real treasure map, salvation. And if we have salvation and the appreciation of salvation in its right place in our heart, we become different types of people. We conduct ourselves differently. We have different priorities. We have no problem with time, talent, and treasury because we understand the treasure of salvation. But it can only become clear to us, first of all, through God's word. And it starts with point one. Point one says the word to revealing the treasure, God's word. We've seen many movies, read books coming up in school about treasures and they have treasure maps and how to go to find this treasure. But I want to highlight the treasure map that is God's word that God has given us to reveal to us that there really is a treasure in heaven. It's a treasure to find yourself free of sin. To know that after this little short life, which is described as a vapor of smoke, a vapor that's here for a moment and gone, those of us know how this vapor appears. We still remember being teenagers. We still remember 
looking at people who we thought were old. And now we are past their ages and still consider ourselves reasonably young. I say that to say that this life that we live is here for a moment and going. We've seen our loved ones, our grandparents, our great grandparents pass away. This fate is for us also, if the Lord shall tarry. There is an afterlife. The treasure is in where you spend that afterlife because you will have eternal life. Where you spend it is based on the revealing of this treasure and what you do with it. I want to encourage today all of us to hide ourselves in God's word. Last week I used the scripture of Psalms 119, 9, 11, where David says, where can a young man cleanse his way? Where can a young woman keep herself pure and virtuous? Thy word. Thy word have I hidden in my heart so that I don't sin against you. I want to endorse a high value for God's word, for getting into God's word, understanding that it is a treasure map to this thing called salvation. It is the guideline to sanctification. It's the protection from becoming complacent in your walk with God. The word of God in connection with the Holy Spirit protects us from becoming whatever this world would draw us to. Let's look at Romans chapter three and verse 23. Romans chapter three and verse 23. I wanna highlight some stuff. This is a very simple message. This is a message we all know, but it is important that we have it in the right perspective within our lives. If not, we just take it for granted. Romans 3 and 23 says, for all of us, every one of us has sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 5 and 12 says, wherefore, as by one man, this guy Adam, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. This sin that was born in the world by this man, has brought about spiritual death to us. And so death passed upon all men. Now, for that all of us have sinned. Romans 7 and 18 to 20 shows the personal effects and the personal struggles that come along with this life. No matter how good you think you are, no matter how good you want to be, Romans 7 verse 18 says, for I know, this is Paul speaking here, that is in me, that is in my flesh, in my grave clothes, dwelleth no good thing. For the real is present with me, and got the desire. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. I don't naturally always do good. Verse 19 says, for the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I do not, which I would not, which I don't want to do, I find myself that I'm doing it. Verse 20 says, now, if I do that, I would not. If I do that thing that I really don't want to do, if I'm doing it, it is no more I to do it, but it's the sin that originates with Adam that is dwelling in me. Romans 1 and 8 puts it in another and more clear way with respect to what sin causes. Verse 18 says, for the wrath, the anger of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and the unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Saints, we must first realize the state we are in if our sins are to be forgiven. We must recognize that sin brings God's wrath. It brings death upon us. I know we live in a time now where people try to minimize sins and make excuses for behavior, but God still holds us to a higher standard because we have a God that is righteous. He has an expectation of us to live in holiness. And the only way we will ever 
begin to understand this, to begin to live up to these standards, is when we've got a high value for God's word. Look at Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. It says that this sin that we have, the wages of this sin is death. But God has got a gift. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our God. This is the revealing from God's word now of this treasure. We're in a position of death, but there is a gift from God. There is a treasure from God that is eternal life that brings us back into the presence of God that fixes what Adam done when he chose to sin. That connection, that divine connection, that treasure of being in God's presence, we now have it. It is a gift of God. This gift is a treasure for us. And we must view it this way. Other than that, we are just being religious and ceremonial and traditional. But when we know that the wages of our sin is death, but God has gifted us with eternal life, we understand that there is a treasure for us. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 21 and 22 says that for since by man, Adam, came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Speaking of what Jesus done, Jesus' resurrection from the dead is an indicator of the resurrection that's taking place in our lives because of what is done. For as in Adam, all are going to die because of what Adam done. Even so in Christ, the word of God is revealing to us. And Paul is revealing to the Corinthians that yes, while in bondage, while got this problem hanging over our head, the wages of sin is death because of what Adam is. In Adam, every man must die. But because of what Christ has done, because he has become the only begotten, he's the begotten of God because of the fact that he rose again. Even so in Christ shall all be made alive. This is the treasure that we have. And only those who truly accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior, only those who truly recognize their sinful state can see and appreciate this gift, this treasure. You are financially in bondage, but then somebody comes and gives you this big lump sum of money, a billion dollars, and you have been completely set financially free. This is what we need to view this bondage of sin over our lives and the gift, this treasure that God has done to take us out of it. We will spend eternity. There are those already in eternity that have, are set and will spend the rest of eternity out of God's presence and living with the consequences of that, living with the regret of that. I don't know. I cannot even imagine what eternity feels like. This is timeless stuff. Living with regret every day. Living with the realization and the remembrance of the opportunities you had to take this treasure that was offered to you, this gift of salvation. Y'all going to spend eternity living with those consequences. Look at Proverbs 15 and verse 32. He that refuses instruction despises his own soul. Pay attention. But he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. Reverend Stephen talked today about you need to make a decision. In the end, you're going to make us what side you're going to pick. He done a demonstration showing the wide gate and the broad way. I say to you today, there has to be a realization, okay, for all of us. There's got to be a realization that God has truly provided a way out of this bondage of sin. 
I read to you, Romans 7, the good that I would, I don't do, but the evil that I don't want to do, I keep finding myself doing, is a bondage of sin. This way out of this bondage is a treasure for us. It's our spiritual freedom from that bondage. God has given it to us via Jesus Christ. The way we realize it is in his word. All of us has to first of all come to a conclusion that I'm a sinful person. The first real realization and actual piece of faith in your life is when you recognize I'm a sinful person. That's the first thing you do. The guy on the cross didn't ask for a miracle. He realized his sinful state and said, God, remember me. We must recognize what's sinful. Yes, superintendent, that's our get out of jail free card. That's the treasure that we have. It starts with us recognizing we need to be freed from this bondage of sin. Look at Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. God's word gives us everything we need to reveal to us exactly where we are. That's why there's many so-called churches today that don't want to stick with God's word. They want to give you a new word from them. They want to give you some positive type of talk, some motivational speech. But a true change can only come when you have God's word. Paul says, that for I'm not ashamed of this gospel of Christ, because it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. This is the power that we have. That's why Paul said, I'm not ashamed of it, because I know what this gospel can do. I know the treasure behind this gospel. And all of us who name the name of Jesus today need to act like what got a billion dollars. We need to act like what been set free, what been blessed, what guaranteed eternal life. And we need to value it. When you value it, you hang on to God's word. Look at Romans 10. And verse 17, because this is what's going to change your life. This is what's going to make you a new person. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. For as it is written, the just, those that are justified by God shall live by faith. And you've got to take God at his word. Not this Bambi Bambi new age stuff that people's doing today, repackaging old pagan type of beliefs in the form of positive talk. What we need is a foundation that is built on faith. Because those that are justified in God's eyes, those that are fit for the kingdom of God, are those that are living by faith. Matthew 6, 19 and 20 gives you more clarity. Jesus himself, as he deals with his disciples, as he deals with the culture of the environment that he was in at that time. Everybody wanted financial independence. Everybody wanted to be able to take care of themselves. Everybody wanted to live well and dine well and have a nice house and send children to college and be all straight from a secular sense. Jesus' response to them is, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon this earth where moth and rust doeth corrupt, and where thieves are able to break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. And the key part to you is the lay up. The lay up means that, no, we don't take riches with us. We send them up ahead. We send them up ahead every day. When we give our time and our talent and our treasury to God and to kingdom work, we're sending forward our treasures into heaven where there is never going to be no more and Ross doing any corruption and no thieves are able to break through and to steal. Your treasure has to be heavenly, saints. 
And you only are able to do this when you've got a genuine understanding of the value of salvation. You can only understand how beautiful this is, this treasure is, by knowing God's word, by getting into God's word. God's word keeps us focused. God's word helps us to understand that what's going on in this life and the things that are attainable in this life cannot be compared to what's in heaven. God's word reveals the treasure and he gives you the map to obtain that treasure. So the word of God shows you that there is a treasure and then the word of God gives you the guidelines on how to obtain this treasure by living a certain type of way. We need to have a high value of God's word. When we have a high value of God's word, we don't want to start our day without getting something in God's word. Because whatever we get in God's word, that's what's going to keep us. That's what the Holy Spirit will bring back to your remembrance sometime during that day. But you've got to have an intake of God's word. That's been where all the change has taken place, where all the miraculous change has taken place in my life. It's been by me taking daily intake of God's word, having a high value for God's word, giving the Holy Spirit something to hold on to, something to bring back to my remembrance when the evil that I don't want to do starts to draw me into doing it. Those that have read Romans would find out that up to that point there in chapter 7, you would only hear the Spirit of God I think mentioned once, and I think it's in chapter 5, the word spirit. But as Paul continues, because we know that there were no chapters, divisions when Paul wrote this epistle, as it goes to what we now know today as chapter 8, you'll find that the Spirit is brought up 19 to 20 times as the counteraction to what is causing me to see and the good that I wouldn't do, I can't do. It's revealed in chapter 8 that it's the Spirit of God that enabled you to live by this Word of God so that you're in a position for this treasure. Jesus tells the guy on the cross today, y'all going to be with me in paradise. Paradise. Saints, we need to be spiritually minded. Jesus says, lay not up for yourself all this stuff that don't get too caught up in this earth, saints. When you take that approach, I want you to know that your time, your talent, and your treasures belong to God. And you find more time to do what God would have you to do. Less problems for the pastor fighting to get you to give up your time, to give up your treasure, and to give up your talent to him. Because your treasure is in heaven, saints. Let's go to point number two. Point number two, the root to the treasure. Still God's word. Yes, the word of God has revealed that we've got a sinful nature. The word of God has revealed that God has provided this treasure called salvation. This victory over sin. This protection from the wrath of God. Now we need to continue in God's word so that we can continue on the road to this treasure. It's actually called sanctification, saints. It's called holiness. It's called a high standard. None of us changed. None of the ancient landmarks have changed. There is too much so-called Christian churches that are seeker sensitive to people who don't even know yet that they need Jesus. They want to go church and be religious. They want to go church and experience an emotion. But they haven't gotten to the faith where they realize that they are sinful and that their sinfulness is an abomination to God. And that they need to change their ways. Change the way they walk. Change the way they talk. They can only do it through God's word. They can only do it. The Romans say that Holy Spirit coming on you. That Holy Spirit praying for you. We need to understand, saints, that we are truly living in the last days. 
And one of the greatest signs of living in the last days, saints, is that when you're getting a word like this here today, many saints will not endure this type of indoctrination, this type of sound doctrine, this type of preaching. And if you find yourself not enduring this type of preaching, this type of word of God that is challenging you to be serious about your walk of God, be careful. Because this is the apostasy state. It's those that were saved who are falling away from God. They once experienced God. They once accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. But they don't value this treasure no more. They don't value the word of God no more. Thanks, we need to be careful and protect what we have. Look at Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 10. Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 10. It simply says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. This is where it begins with. That proper fear, that proper respect. When you're getting the knowledge of God and you're applying this to your life, that's when you're really going to get some understanding of what this world is really about. John chapter 14, Jesus speaking here. He says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I don't care what the saying in any other religion. No man can come unto the Father but by me. This is why we can get along with everybody who names the name and claims to be serving God, rather the of a Muslim faith or Hindu faith. No, all roads don't lead to Jesus. All roads don't lead to this treasure. Jesus said, I am the way the truth and the life. Nobody else can bring you to the Father but by me. It's what I have provided. This is the reality of this treasure. You may not want to recognize it now, but there is a word in this Bible that says that there is going to come a day that every knee shall bow. Today it might be a Hindu. It will be later be Jesus. To me, it might be whatever religion you want to put there. But eventually you're going to recognize, you're going to kneel before our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the word of God. No man can come to the Father but by Jesus. John chapter 10, verses 7 to 10. Then said Jesus unto them again, very, very surely, surely I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. All these other religions that do not accept Jesus Christ as the way to God are thieves and robbers. But those that are in a relationship with God, those that have this treasure, he calls them, but the sheep did not hear them. Those of us that are truly saved, we ain't listening to all these other songs that are out there. We know this. We know what the truth is. We have the truth. Despite the fact that many, as Reverend Stephen Trust said today, many are going that way. Broad is the way, and wide is the gate. Jesus said, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he or she shall be saved. This is the treasure. And shall go in and out and find passion. The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. Jesus said, I am come that they, that us, we might have life. We would have this treasure and that we may have it more abundantly. God's word is here today, saints, for us so that we can find the treasure of Jesus' gift. And that treasure of Jesus' gift is called salvation. My message is simple. This is the simplicity of the word of God. This is why Paul said, I'm not ashamed of this gospel because it's got the power to change your life. But you've got to value God's word. You've got to value this treasure. You've got to have your treasure set up in heaven and not caught up so much in this life. This life is so much going on that if you're not living by faith, the just shall live by faith. If you're not living by faith, this world overtakes you. 
You have problems giving up your time and your treasure and your talents. Other stuff becomes important. Saints, today, I want this word to continue to resonate in your hearts to remind you because it's so easy to become complacent, to become traditional, to become religious and ceremonial in our worship with God. But I need us to stay in God's word because once we stay in God's word, God continues to reveal to us how wretched we really are, how reliant we need to be on God's word and how wonderful a treasure we have called salvation. I'm going to spend eternity with a new body that's no longer sick. I'm going to be with my loved ones that have given their hearts to God in eternity. I can't begin to imagine what that is like. How many millions and trillions of years that may be. Oh, I know that forever is a very long time. Forever is a very long time. And to know that I will be able to be in his presence. I will have a new heart that's not got to be pumping like this. And I'll be breathing his name every day in every way that I am. This is the beauty of the treasure. My last four scriptures I want to bring out is going to highlight once again the beauty of the world to this treasure and us having a high value of this treasure. It says, now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, this is John the Baptist, is in prison and is hearing about the miracles and the wonderful things that Jesus is doing. It says he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, and they said unto Jesus, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto him, Go and show John. Again, those things which you do hear and see. Go see the proof of who Jesus is. The blind receive their sight, and the lame are walking, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. This is the road to the treasure. John the Baptist has got an expectation of what the Messiah is going to be like. And this moment, he sends disciples to Jesus to get a confirmation. Are you really the Messiah? Today, we know that Jesus is this Messiah. We have all these gospels that give us an account of some of the miracles that Jesus has done. John tells us that if all the miracles that Jesus has done was written, probably it wouldn't be enough books to write it down. So that gives you an idea of how many miracles Jesus was doing. And that's why John heard what he heard. But it's a way, it's a process. And the only way we do it and are able to stay focused is by staying on God's word and not trying to go ahead. John's going ahead looking for the kingdom of Israel to be restored. But it's a process. And God has a process for each of us as children of God. It starts with you laying out for yourselves treasures in heaven. God's got to be in the right priority in your life. You're going to be challenged. It's always a reason not to give your time, your talent, and your treasury to God. You need to stay in God's word so that you're always finding a reason to give up your treasure, to give up your talent, to give up your time to your master. Give up your best to him. Too many of us as saints know that we gave our best years to the world. And I speak for myself. Very few are like pastor and my wife who started at a very young age and gave up their best years to their master. I gave it away, chasing foolishness. But I thank God that I have salvation today. I have these treasure saints. I have it. And I'm not going to let it slip away. Look at Matthew chapter 7. Verses 13 and 14, it says, as Reverend Stephen Trott spoke today, unto ye in at this straight gate, saints, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and as many people there be which go in direct. Many are going in this way. Jesus says, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto this treasure, 
and few there be that find it. There's a treasure and few are going to be able to find it. You can only find it via the word of God. You can only find it by receiving and listening to the word of God. The just shall live by faith. That faith can only be revealed through the word of God who reveals to us, first of all, that we are a sinful person. We are of a sinful nature and that we need Jesus' gift of eternal life. 2 Timothy 3 and 16 highlights what this word of God is. It says, Paul says, all the scripture is given by the inspiration of God as God breathes and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. It's profitable to show you what's right and what's wrong. It shows you how to get right and how to stay right. This is what the word of God does. It leads us to this place called treasure. It leads us to a place that Jesus told the thief on the cross that is paradise, saints. We need to stay heavenly minded. Lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. Don't become so caught up in this world that you can give up your best to your master. You can give all your talent. You can give all your treasury. You can give up your time because you're caught up in this world stuff. Say what I'm talking about. It's not normal. It's not easy because we naturally have great clothes. We naturally want to go in our own way. Romans 7 talks about how easy it is to do what we shouldn't do. But the Spirit of God, through the Word of God, will direct you. Acts 4 and 12 again reminds us, saints as I close, this is what we live. Neither is there salvation, neither is there any treasure, any gift in any other religion that's out there. For there is no other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. And saints, I present to you today that it's still Jesus. It's still Jesus as your Lord and Savior. It's still Jesus recognizing that he has paid the penalty for your sins. It's you realizing that Jesus has blessed you with this treasure called salvation. Give of your best to your master. Give your time, give your treasure. Give your talent because it's a gift in heaven. And every time you give this to God, God is allowing you to store up treasures in heaven. That when you get there, when you stand before him and give an account of your life, he's going to know what was really important to you. Was it what was going on on this earth or was I heavenly minded? Was I living her? functioning like I should function in this world, but my mind was heavily focused. I knew where my real treasure was. There is only one way to this treasure, saints, in heaven. There's only one way, and we must remember this. You must follow the only treasure map we have, which is the word of God. Yes, there are so-called priests and some even popes today making claim that the word of God is not that important. God's word is still the only way. God's word is the only way. This is the only door. And only his sheep hear his voice via the word of God being presented. There is a treasure for us today, saints. Those of us that are saved have that treasure. Let us not minimize that treasure. Let us appreciate this gift from God, that puts us back into right standing with God, that puts us in a place where we can lay our treasure in heaven. We may never be rich on this life. Our home is in heaven. All is awaiting for us. That's our focus today, saints. Keep heavenly minded on the treasure called salvation, and you'll find that you operate different in everything that you do. You'll find that you take your walk with God that much more serious. You'll find that your pastor should have less problems getting you to be involved with your time and your talent and even your treasure because your home is in heaven. If we don't stay in God's word, we don't keep the appreciation of this treasure that's been granted unto us. Praise the Lord. This is what God has laid on my heart today. 
And I pray that this message, as simple as it is, continues to convict you of the gift that we have from God called salvation. Because we have surrendered our lives to God. Because we are living by faith. Because we are living by God's word. Give up your best to your master. Today. Lay up treasure in heaven. Because God won't forget what you do for him. Praise the Lord. I want to take this opportunity to remind anyone out there today that does not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, that God loves you. He loves you so much that has given this word today to remind you that there is no other way to get to heaven but through Jesus. You need to accept what is done on that cross. You must realize that you are a sinful person and you need to repent of your sins. If this is where you are today, please repeat these words after me. Father God, I realize that I am a sinner. God, I realize that I've walked in my own way long enough. Lord, I also realize that you died and that you rose again so that all my sins can be forgiven. God, I repent of my sinful ways. I surrender my life to you. I accept you as my Lord and Savior, God. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Hallelujah. If this is what you have done, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like the thief on the cross, it's no great thing you can do, but believe. It's when you believe. That guy on the cross believed who Jesus was. And if you believe, then you are saved. Those that have found themselves not taking God as serious as they should, not giving all of their treasure, all of their time, and all of their talent that they can give. And that's between you and God. Then I've got to give what I'm giving of my time and of my talent and of my treasury. But I've got to give what God is Revealing to you, you need to give up. Me and Pastor Seaman spoke earlier about the rich young ruler and how he wasn't willing to give up stuff because he had so much fortune that he didn't want to give up stuff to do God's work. You need to know as children of God, whatever's your hang up, whatever's holding you back from giving your all to your master, You've got to be honest about it today. And this is your opportunity to renew that walk with God. Stand on God's word. Let God's word make the difference. Let God's word sanctify you so that we can move on and lay up some treasure in heaven that God has for us. But this is what God has given me, saints. Be encouraged. Take this word today and start fresh. Be renewed. Keep your eyes focused on this gifting, this treasure that God has given us. This is the word that God gave me. Thank you for this opportunity to bring it to you. And I pray that the Holy Spirit continues to move within your spirit. God bless you in Jesus' name.